All right, hopefully we'll have no more no more fallen chairs. Hopefully everyone's seated and safe as we <laughs> kick this off. Um, so really great to be here. Thank you all so much for coming out kind of the first day in the morning. We really appreciate it. Um, Tara, it's great to be here with you. Yeah, I think it's, it's been a while. I think pre-Omicron, we met in LA with the launch of the SkySphere uh, concept car, which is really exciting. Yeah, it was one of those periods right Right between waves where we thought we were maybe coming out of it right before all these rounds. Exactly. We got it in. Um, but it's wonderful to be here, especially in person together. And I think what's exciting about this chat um, and, and all of our discussions leading up to this is it's a really fascinating time for Audi, for Bloomberg Media, for the media and the auto industries as a whole. When we think about all of the transformation that is taking place, digitization, sustainability, DEI. And of course, all the geopolitical challenges that we're facing, you know, obviously today, but but certainly for the past couple of years, um, massive amount of change that we're we're all grappling with. And I wanted to very purposefully start out noting that with something positive, with something optimistic. Um, can you talk about one thing at Audi that you're really excited about today? What keeps you motivated? What keeps you really excited for your daily responsibilities? It's so there? hard when you say just one thing. Um, I feel like I have to start by saying it's just so amazing to be in a room with people. I feel like I have mastered the like, business on top, pajamas on bottom, <laughs> looking, looking at a screen all day. Um, but it's really nice to be just with people again. So thank you for the opportunity and you know to see everyone's faces here today. Um, things I'm excited about, I think just in general right now, working for a brand that feels like we have a role to help shape society and you know bring benefits to communities. Being in a role like I have right now is a great privilege. I'm really grateful for that. And I think when it comes to the auto industry, this is such an exciting, transformative time. So the fact that my kids are going to grow up and EVs don't sound like something that's you know from the Jetsons that shows my age. Yep. Um, but you know, it's these are the vehicles that they're growing up with, and to be part of that transformation, we always say, you know, the auto industry is going to change more in this decade than it did in a hundred years before that, which is pretty amazing to be part of that journey. Yeah, that, that scale of change is, is so incredible to think about and think about how we navigate through that. And one thing that's been really exciting about some of the work we're doing at Bloomberg Media, and that's quite frankly, I think, been a really nice distraction over the last several months, is really thinking about how do we take our core as Bloomberg, I'm sure all, all of you are familiar with Mike himself or uh, the terminal, and, and at the core of what we do, we're, we're really a data company. And what we wanted to do is really think about how do we bring that data to bear to the marketing world? And how do we create a proprietary intelligence tool that looks at brand perceptions in a really rigorous and unique way? And so we're excited to announce we're launching the Bloomberg Brand Accelerator this week here. And what that is, is it's a study on brand perceptions, measuring companies' uh, strengths, measuring their brand health across vision, strength, familiarity, relevance, and trust. We look at about 700 global brands. We've surveyed about 15,000 people. And the difference really with our study is, is sort of who we're talking to. It's not a gen pop study. It's a business decision maker, C-suite, high net worth study. So we're really focused on those that are really making decisions in their personal lives, in their professional lives, and really trying to understand a brand's health from that perspective. And as we were thinking about South by Southwest, we wanted to think about, could we create um, a list off this study that would be really topically pertinent. And so I think, you know, even in the name, brand innovators, we talk a lot about innovation as an organization, right? Um, in the marketing world, we talk a lot about ingenuity. But it's one of those terms that's, that's we all know it's positive and good. We want to be, you know, ingenious, we want to be innovative, but it's often hard to really break down what that means. You know, how do you define ingenuity, for example? So what we were able to do with our data set in the Bloomberg Brand Accelerator is we conducted a factor analysis to understand what actually comprises ingenuity. And we were able to actually identify seven key attributes that really define ingenuity. The first is growing. You're perceived as a growing company and a growing brand. The second is thought leadership. You're seen as sort of leading your category. The third is being bold and daring. You're taking risks. You're getting yourself out there. You're communicating about what you're doing. The fourth is disrupting business. So again, you're doing something a bit different, right? You have the courage to kind of communicate something a bit, a bit more provocatively than the category, perhaps. You're investing in technology, you're anticipating customer needs, and you're innovative. 
And I think something that was really interesting for us was, of course, when you think about ingenuity or innovation, you do think of technology. You think about big tech. But what this factor analysis revealed um, that we're compiling in the 2022 uh, ingenuity list is that it is multifaceted, right? It's not just about big tech. And I think what got me excited for this conversation, Tara, is that Audi is a case in point in that. Audi ranks number 20 out of 250 brands and number two in the auto category, just, just behind Tesla. Um, and one thing that Audi is performing extremely well on as we think about ingenuity is being bold and daring. And in fact, you rank at the 91st percentile of all brands ranked in our study on being bold and daring. So I'd love to start there and just hear how you think about that and how you think about being bold and daring. It's something that uh, you really purposefully think about in your work. Yeah, well, we were excited to see those results with bold and daring, um, for sure, because I think these days, brands, it's difficult for brands to be bold and daring. It's not something easy to do, because in today's world, everything is so polarizing, and people are definitely on different topics, opposite sides of the table, so you really do have to do a few things to have the confidence and courage to be bold and daring. I think having your clear vision and a clear purpose of what you're trying to accomplish is so important. And then being committed to that and understanding that in your commitment, you're not gonna make everyone happy. Not everyone's gonna like you, not gonna like every move you make. And you have to have the courage to know your values, know your purpose as a brand and make those commitments regardless of that. So you obviously are paying attention to your consumers, you're paying attention to what's going on in society, um, but having, you know, having that assurance, that confidence that you know your brand is so important. The other piece is, you know, I was saying before, the auto industry and the shift that it's making, right now the diversity that we're bringing into the industry is so crucial to the innovation that we're setting the stage for and constantly doing and that diversity is not only the visible diversity of gender and race because admittedly the automotive industry has not been very diverse for a long time so those visible diversity elements are really important but also the keep bringing people in with different backgrounds. So you mentioned, you know, it was very common to see tech companies. These days, whether you're automotive, CPG, everyone's a tech company. You know, everyone is looking at digitalization. So you really have to bring people that maybe don't have the classical experience that you have been hiring for decades before. Um, when I first joined Audi, I started on the PR and communication side and just recently in the last year moved over to marketing. And yes, as a woman, I sometimes bring a different perspective into the room, but more often than not, my perspective is different because I came from outside of the automotive industry. I came from the beer business, I come from the travel industry, and it's that diversity that allows me to ask questions about how things have, have been being done forever you know, you have a group of people, and it's the blend. It's not, you know, all new perspective. It's the blend of people who have the historical expertise in automotive, then blended with people who are coming from different industries, and that brings together some magic. And of course, then when you're bringing in more women, more people of color, people of different backgrounds, um, you get different perspectives and you get a lot more creative ideas and different thinking. So that's really fueling the innovation that's fueling us to be bold and daring. So I love that, Tara. And that, that notion of perspective, whether it's internal or external, is obviously so important. And I think another attribute that you guys perform extremely well on is anticipating customer needs so really that idea of gaining perspectives from your customer set from your audience set in fact you're even stronger on that one than bold and daring you're in the 96 percentile of all brands ranked on that attribute can you talk a little bit about how you marry the notion of anticipating customer needs with something like sustainability and your commitments in sustainability Sure. Um, I think it's, you know, I think every business has to anticipate customer needs. Every business has a customer journey and says their customer focus. I think I like to think of it more as just being human centric and people focused, being a real person. I think from a leadership perspective, it always surprises me when you're just, you know, a normal person having a normal conversation, speaking in non corporate speak, how far that can go. And then I also, you know, think when it comes to customer needs, not just looking at you know what will really help our drivers our, our future consumers in the vehicle what do they need technology wise but in addition to them as just one singular person how do we look at how that affects the community around them and i think that's what we've been doing a lot for in the sustainability area 
is yes, how do we create a sustainable journey for one driver, but how do we also create EVs that are benefiting the whole community and the whole society around us? And that's been the main pillar in our strategy moving forward. Amazing. And when you think about customers being the center, whether it's innovating for sustainability, um, or even thinking about you know things that are more smaller in scale, right? Just those moments of delight. How do you think about innovation at that scale of just surprise and delight and those little sort of details that keep people loyal to Audi? Yeah, I think it works. You know, some of them are product focused, and some of them are just more experience focused with the brand. So when I think about even you know, there's major innovative technologies we're putting into these vehicles, but sometimes it is the smaller little right. things. And um, I was thinking about the time where I was driving in the car with my son, and I had convinced him that I had superpowers because every time we got to a red light, I was like, well, you know, I know exactly when it's going to change. Like, watch this. And I would do a countdown. I was like, oh my God, Mom, you're so good at this. And I was using our traffic light information in the Audi, which actually shows it has a countdown for red lights, and it actually allows you, um, it tells you exactly which speed to drive to also hit that green wave. So, you know, that's something that's like such a nice surprise if you get into one of our vehicles and you haven't experienced that yet, but also a really good tool to convince your kids that you're superpowers. Yeah, I was going to say, I need to try that with my four-year-olds. Yeah. Like super, super mom there. And then beyond, you know, some of the smaller product things, it's in the experience that we create for consumers. And my favorite surprise and delight story is something we just did in last December, right around the holiday season. Um, I don't know if anyone saw this, but there was a contestant on Wheel of Fortune, and she got the she got the question, the answer right, but she paused just a little bit too long between two of the words and lost out on an Audi Q3. And we saw that really quickly on social. We were able to respond, and we gave Char we got Charlene the Q3. And you know, there there are moments of just like paying attention to what people are talking about and. It was right around the holidays. It was such a great, like, talk about surprise and delight. It was a great moment for her. She had been sharing a car with her husband for years. It was her first new vehicle that she'd owned. And my team just had such an amazing time. It was also a surprise and delight for my team to say, hey, we pulled this off. We had fun doing this. It was, you know, in the world, like you were saying right now, with everything going on, with a pandemic, with you know, international war and crisis, like sometimes you just have to have that little smile. So we as a brand might not be able to fix those big, huge macro issues, but sometimes we could bring just a little small smile on a micro level, and you realize how much that can do for people. And especially when we're doom scrolling all day and seeing all the news that, you know, I think that's such a good example of when you talked about it's not just about being customer centric, it's about being human centric. And that idea of being able to bring that moment of joy to that person, that's such a wonderful way to not only showcase the Audi brand and your values, but to, to, but to create loyalty as well. Um, switching gears a little bit, you talked about that, that super mom story, right? Of the, the technology that you have in the Audi. And obviously, you all are doing a lot in terms of investing in technology, um, particularly in software. You're sort of leading the VW family around the software in the cars. You're also, you know, partnering with Verizon on bringing 5G to your entire, you know, fleet by 2024, I believe. Um, so, can you talk about how you think about investing in technology as it pertains to ingenuity and sort of where that fits sort of in your priorities? Yeah, well, like I was saying before, you know, when we're talking about tech companies and everyone being a tech company, and even when we're talking about the metaverse and NFTs, it, digital technology, there's such dynamic spaces right now where no one can be a true expert in it. So we've had people come in to the team and just give us, you know, the latest on NFTs and the latest on various technologies. And a, the way a lot of these experts are opening up is by saying, you know, what I'm telling you this morning, by the time it's this afternoon or this evening, there might be new information and new ways of doing things, which I think is exciting, just being on that learning journey as a brand, as a leader, um, as an employee at a company that you, you, you know, you're not in that one routine, you're just constantly looking for how things are developing. So I think it's crucially important to invest in 
time for everyone to learn about technology and digitalization because you know the idea of a, an expert used to be spend 10,000 hours on something and then you're considered an expert. These days, it's just changing so dramatically that it's given us all an opportunity to just keep it fresh, keep learning, and um, not get stuck in any one spot. Right, right. And on that note of, of sort of constant evolution, I think one of the things that struck me um, about what you all have done and sort of pivots that you've made in sort of your practices and thought leadership is how you combined your sustainability report and your annual report. So you really you know, took a stand of talking about financials in relation to sustainability, which is incredibly provocative. Um, and I thought just an amazing you know, position of thought leadership in the category. Can you talk a little bit about that, how you think about thought leadership, and is it through things like that, or custom content, or media activations? How do you think about driving thought leadership? I think that's really important. It used to be that you were just you know, having a meeting with your shareholders, stakeholders, and giving them you know, the latest uh, business results, and it was just all about the numbers. But we all know that businesses today just play such a bigger role in society, where we, where we have to be accountable for all of the impacts that we're making. So it goes far beyond just the money making and, and how you're turning a profit as a company, but it's about the impact you're having on the world. So that's through your products, it's also through how you spend your marketing dollars, it's how you run your business, it's how you deal with your employees and you know make them feel like they're engaged in the business and have a voice in the business. So you know, along with sustainability reports being part of, you know, annual reports and quarterly, I mean, there's a, there are a lot of topics that we have to start talking about during that time and that we have to hold companies accountable for. And I'm glad I'm, I'm in a role where I can, you know, be able to push for that and also advocate for that and then also put, have the decision-making power to put the money behind it. That's so important, as you said, just being able to actually enforce and hold accountability to those things is, is obviously so important to make things tangible. Um, you spoke a lot about sort of the, the goals and these, the sort of the ambition, and I'd love to take a step back um, and put innovation uh, on the side for just one moment and talk about vision. As I mentioned before, vision is sort of core to how we think about the Bloomberg Brand Accelerator. It's core to how we think about a brand driving to those best brand health metrics and scores. And I'd love to hear a little bit about how you know, you're thinking about your vision in shaping the world of tomorrow. Yeah, so the brand right now, um, our brand positioning is around the future as an attitude. And that attitude is all about the kind of optimism. I've, we've been calling it rebel optimism. So obviously there are a lot of challenges in the world today. And the ability to be super optimistic, to be solutions focused, to be focused on progress, not only from a product standpoint, but obviously in everything we're doing around the product as well. That's amazing. Um, now that I totally pivot um, and get to some of the, the, maybe the, maybe the more fun stuff, I guess it depends, depends on who you are, but I want to talk about supercars. And I want to talk about um, you know, the role of innovation in the high performance vehicle segment, but then how that sort of permeates the entire organization. If you could talk a little bit about that, if, if how you think about that more broadly. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the exciting things that's been happening over this last year is we've launched a series of concept vehicles. And it's really exciting to see not only us talk about what the future holds and show these concept vehicles, but at the same time, all of them are EVs of the future. But at the same time, to have the largest portfolio of EVs available actually for purchase today. So a lot of times in the industry, it was concept cars just to kind of look wow everyone of what's to come in the future but they weren't really tangible now we have the full line of evs everything from halo of our e-tron gt to our more accessible model that's coming out as a q4 but we've also seen the sky sphere which you got to yes. see the launch of so i mean i think we have a picture yeah here's the picture of the sky sphere this is a real transformer so you can move to um, obviously, you can drive this vehicle yourself, but it's also you can move to autonomous driving. So a lot of these concept vehicles are just reimagining what the driving and the experience of just being in a car will be in the future. So this actually can turn into more of a living space with autonomous driving. It could be more of a social space. It could be more of a place where you're doing work, communicating. It's amazing. What, it, what autonomous driving of the future opens up for just the experience of being in one of our vehicles. So it's exciting to at the same time, you know, see us pushing forward so aggressively 
and and have that be tangible, but then see really where the future is going to be. And that we have more to come on that front too. So that's amazing. next year we'll continue that. And I think what's so um, wonderful about this discussion and sort of what you just mentioned is it's not just innovation for innovation's sake. You really are marrying purpose and innovation to sort of creating that future and creating a very impactful, thoughtful future. So that's really amazing. And I think that that's one element of that ingenuity definition that we talked about a little earlier. And we saw that in our study, that purpose-driven leaders, when we segmented out all of those participants uh, in the study, purpose-driven leaders, more so than even other segments, really were giving you like incredibly high scores across vision, strength, relevance, trust, and familiarity. So you're definitely getting credit for that purpose-driven innovation. And I think what's also really interesting is that both Audi and I think Bloomberg Media we share this mission to, to make that positive impact on the future and on tomorrow. And I think one of the things that we're really excited about that we're doing is we're, we're partnering with minority-owned media brands like Ebony. We're creating new brands to service modern leaders of today and the topics that they care about. We talk a lot about you know sustainability and the topics that we need to sort of push to be more central in the conversation. Um, seeing that, we launched the Bloomberg Green brand three years ago to be the only global media brand, multi-platform brand in the world covering sustainability. After the killing of George Floyd, we launched Bloomberg Equality to again be that global perspective on CD&I issues. And we're even taking them a step further, we're actually doing media training for underrepresented groups to make sure that they show up more on camera, in news, um, and, and in the best way possible. So doing a lot around those topics that, that are really at the intersection of purpose and innovation. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you're thinking about that, Tara. How is Audi really thinking about acting on that sort of um, synergy between those two really important values? One of the things that's been a perspective at Audi for decades now is this idea that anything made by people could be made better by people. Um, it originally said made by man could be better. I, I changed it to people. <laughs> I was going to note that here. Excellent change, um, yep. But that's a perspective, you know, we've always been a brand that's kind of pushed on the technology front. Um, if you followed Audi over the years, always challenging ourselves of what we could create next, how we can have an amazing design, high performance technology. And I think the transition that we're looking to make is how do we continue to do that but make sure that that is to the benefit of a larger group of people, to the communities around us, that we're being thoughtful, that we're holding ourselves accountable. And that means everything around all of our commitments around sustainability, um, electrifying our portfolio, diversifying our staff. Um, those are the things that you know leaders today have to be focused on more than just your product. And we'll never, we'll never keep our eye off of, take our eye off of, having that you know amazing technology and beautiful design but i think everyone's really committed to that's just the that's the first step we have to go a lot further than that right thank you and i just wanted to end with one question about sort of the, the Bloomberg brand accelerator data and that ingenuity list i'm sure you look at obviously your role tons of research on your brand i'm sure you do brand tracking studies all the time but just curious if there was anything surprising about about the research on out here or surprising in terms of the way we were thinking about brand health well like you said before i think one of the greatest benefits of, of this study is the audience that you're capturing. Because I can't say that we capture that audience in another place. I mean, we do a ton of everything from very traditional ad tracking and you know, Kantar and the NPM and the GFKs of the world to really looking at social sentiment, um, looking at our PR results. I mean, we have so, so much data that's coming in and I think it's easy to kind of get lost in that data sometimes. But you're hitting an audience of influencers, business elites and decision makers that I think we, we haven't been able to capture in other studies before. So it was really interesting to be able to see that. Um, and then of course there were some interesting disparities between kind of um, how we ranked with genders and different you know, millennials versus boomers. So that was intriguing to see some of that as well. Wonderful, glad it could be additive. Um, I think we're just about at time, so I just want to thank you, Tara, for joining me today and being so insightful early on a Friday morning. I want to thank Brand Innovators for having us. Um, please do check out the Bloomberg Brand Accelerator and the 2022 Ingenuity List, see how your brand and your company stacks up. Also want to thank um, Michelle, Jen, Christine, and Mirabella for all their work on Brand Accelerator. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Yeah, I, think, I think we actually have time for, wait, hold your applause. We have time for like one or two questions. You guys good with that?
Sure. And I'll just make one comment. I know there are a lot of people um, here that might be, you know, from different companies and have different ideas. If you're, if you are someone who's playing in that space of metaverse and NFTs, and you feel like you have some interesting, intriguing ideas of how not only, like when we were speaking about it before with Disney, not we also have audio auto enthusiasts who obviously our cars are iconic, and you can see how that could easily work with NFTs. But I'm also really intrigued in how we do that in a way that will be philanthropic as well and give back to the community. So when I look at NFT strategy, I'm really looking to blend those two things of how how we how we create NFTs around the iconic enthusiast part of our business, but how it, then it gives back. So if anyone is in that space, please feel free to reach out to me. I love how consistent your purpose and innovation are, right? Um, across everything you do. All right, I think we have time for one question. All right. Hi there. Um, I'm Luke Chowdhury from Nextdoor. Um, you talked about coming from the outside, from the beer company. I'm seeing that across uh, the automotive industry, Susan Beery in at Ford. Can you talk about coming in, how much do you bring from the outside? How much do you accept that's already there? What's your process? Is it fast, slow? How do you disrupt? Well, I, I definitely think if you're coming in from the outside, you do have to do a lot of listening, of course. And you can't think that you're going to bring in just all your ways from other industries into what you're doing. So it's, it is really a blend. And I think it depends on the topic. That's, that's for sure. I was really interested that, you know, when I came in from beer, people were like, oh, wow, going from beer to automotive. Those are two wildly different worlds and they are but then there are always so many interesting parallels like the you know our distributor network when i worked at heineken and our dealer network when i work at audi there's some really interesting parallels there in some of our sponsorships you know we did a lot of work with like MLS and other, you know, um, organizations and did a lot of, I led a lot of inclusion work at Heineken and I'm able to do the same at Audi. So it's surprising sometimes things that feel really different aren't that different at all. All right, I love it. So now we can applaud. Thank you so much. This was great.